Four stages down today, we reach the Queen stage of the virtual Tour de France as we arrive at the Beast of Provence. Today, we're going to start with the women's race as we take the riders up to Chalet Reynard. The yellow jersey today is on the shoulders of Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. Their advantage over drops, as you can see there. Sara Gigante, the young Australian rider, will be in the yellow jersey of the race. The green jersey contest is between Canyon Shram and Team Tipco as well. Today, the very talented Kashid Niwiadoma will be in the green jersey as the leader of that classification. There's been an interesting tussle over the last uh, two weekends for the Queen of the Mountains and drops are currently on top at the moment with Joss Loudon, a rider who's been pretty much the main animator of that contest in the polka dot jersey today as the leader of the Queen of the Mountains. And in the white jersey contest for the best young rider, again drops with their performance so far, have uh, Fincher Smekal in that jersey but it's a really close contest between drops canyon shram team 2020 and team sunweb to decide who will ultimately wear the white jersey at the end of stage six on the champs elysees let's remind you then of how this all works it's a team based tour de france there are points as you can see at the finish line for the top 25 riders points are accumulated team at the top of the rankings will then wear the yellow jersey. Same with the green jersey. Today there's one intermediate sprint along the way at 6.98 kilometers, and there are points at the finish line as well. Points, as you can see, 10 down to one for, for both the intermediate sprint and the stage finish. The Queen of the Mountains. Well, today we've got a little climb, which will be at 10.85 kilometers, the first point of the uh, the race and then we will race our way to the Chalet Reynard for the race finish but that doesn't count towards the Queen of the Mountains. The white jerseys for the best young rider. The first 10 riders born after January the 1st 1995 will secure points from 10 down to 1 and again it's all about how many points you've accumulated for your team and the team has awarded the jersey and one rider wears it. Overall, there is a team classification as well. All the points from all the different classifications are tallied up, and then the team at the top of the rankings are the top team overall. And you can take part as well. There's a Twitter poll conducted during the race. If you go to Twitter, at Le Tour, the Tour de France Twitter feed, and there you can get involved in uh, deciding who is the most aggressive rider of the race. Swift is the platform we're on. And it is a game as well as a, an athletic endeavor. So there are some power-ups available that can help the riders. And we'll explain those to you if you've never seen them before as the race goes on. Here's the lineups then. Let's pick some of the riders out for you. Uh, Ella Harris is here for Canyon Shram. Joss Loudon in the Queen of the Mountains jersey. The rally team always strong. Brody Chapman and Cecilia Utrecht Ludwig uh, headline the FDJ team. Lizzie Dyknan is riding for the Trek Sega Fredo squad. She doesn't have a lot of experience on racing on Zwift, but she is here nonetheless. And when it comes down to climbing, she's one of the top riders in the world. This is the course. It's called La Reine, or in general translation, the Queen has been the Queen stage. It's 1,205 metres of climbing today. One intermediate sprint, one third category climb part way up the Mont Ventoux and we're going to finish after 22.9 kilometers at the Chalet Reynard. Here's our peloton. 11 minutes of racing now been covered by this group of riders. 14 kilometers now to go to the finish of today's stage. And pretty much we are going to see the riders go uphill from here. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur Radio Tour pour la cinquième étape du Tour de France virtuel femme l'étape reine de ce tour située en France et tout en ascension 22,9 km à parcourir aujourd'hui pour les concurrentes représentant 16 équipes Hello and welcome on Radio Tour for stage 5 of the virtual tour of France the queen stage of the tour situated in France and going uphill 22.9 km of racing today 
All the riders representing 16 teams. The voice of Seb Piquet, the voice of uh, Radio Tour of the Tour de France as we take a look at the avatars of the riders. So if you've never seen this race before, this is the virtual Tour de France, held over three weekends of racing to decide who will be the ultimate yellow jersey team of the race. Normally the yellow jersey, of course, is awarded to one rider in particular, being Egan Bernal last year of the Tour de France. Here's our yellow jersey. This is Sara Gigante of Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank, a young Australian rider. So Sarah is in the jersey, 2019 Australian champion and 2020 time trial champion as well. And racing hard. It will be very, very late in Australia right now. So she's had to be here and get ready for this race. But she's performing well and she knows that Team Tipco want to bring home this victory. It's been very important for them as uh, one of the American squads to do so well in this virtual Tour de France and they've done exceptionally well as a team. Top left hand side of the screen, hashtag is TDF United. I've mentioned it during the last couple of weekends but we are raising money for charity and there are five cycling related charities we are raising money for so if you want some information take a look at the hashtag as we get a look here at Kashaniwi Adoma this is the Polish rider, rides for Canyon Schram. She's 25 years of age, has already won the Amstel Gold. You can see the red and white band round the shoulder there or the right-hand cuff of her sleeve, showing she was the Polish champion as well. She's won the OVO Women's Tour in Great Britain, which is the, one of the biggest stage races for women's cycling in the world. And you see the concentration on her face as she just tries to stay in the group. She'll be one of the riders who on the mountain could be a possible winner of this stage. You can see the concentration in her eyes. 286 watts, rolling along at 89 revs per minute. And already we're going uphill at 27 kilometers an hour. Looks to me like we've got a little bit of an attack. And it's coming from Brody Chapman, another Australian rider. She's trying to go clear already on this 6% gradient. You can see there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. And if you're looking at the positions of the riders, right-hand side of the screen is uh, giving you the time gaps. It's also showing the watts per kilogram of the riders. So the watts they produce by their legs through the pedals, and then it's divided by their body weights. And if you see the, the watts per kilo really going up high, then you will see that their rider has gone on the attack. And one rider who's gone on the attack is Brody Chapman. There she is on the left-hand side. Travelled back from Australia a couple of weeks ago with Lauren Kitchen, her teammate from the FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine Futuroscope team. And Brody's been training down there in Girona in Spain since they arrived back. Very talented rider, Brody Chapman, 29 years of age. Winner of the Herald Sun Tour in Australia. Fifth in the Tour of California. And she's using the gradient now to very, very good effect. So this is where riders can attack on this gradient when it gets to 6%. And she's opened up already. Pretty hefty advantage. 19 seconds here for Brody Chapman. As she goes clear of the rest of the peloton. Now, she used her power to get up over 8 watts per kilo, which is a big attack from this rider from FDJ. As we go through the Queen of the Mountains point on the climb. So Chapman takes that. Behind her looked like we had one of the drops riders. Smaykull in the white jersey, so she's just secured some points for the Queen of the Mountains competition, which will help Drops maintain their advantage as Joss Loudon comes to the front as well. Still a lot of riders in the group. Now, uh, we're just getting a glimpse here of Joss Loudon, rides for the Drops team, this small British team who have got 
big ambitions of becoming part of the world tour of women's cycling. And Joss Loudon's been performing exceptionally well over the last couple of weeks. 32 years of age, came to cycling late. She was a rider who was an athlete. Second on stage two of this virtual Tour de France and her drops team have won two stages as well with April Tacey who won stage number one and won stage four last weekend. For these riders now trying to hunt Brody Chapman down who has already opened up his nine second advantage being chased by Danny Christmas, a British rider. Confirmation then that Chapman took the three points on the petty climb on this Laudain stage of the virtual Tour de France. Smakel of drops was second and Loudon was third, so that's good news for the drops team. That means they've accumulated another three points, puts them on 43 points overall in the Queen of the Mountains. And I think that pretty much means that we are going to see the drops team win this Queen of the Mountains. Here is the German rider, Fincher Smakel, who is in this Queen of the Mountains, uh, the white jersey today, actually, the best young rider, 19 years of age, a young rider from Drops, which has to date been a development team, really. And now we see Brody Chapman caught and a big attack by the British rider, Danny Christmas. Danny Christmas now going clear, a member of the Lotto Sudal team. In the team today, they've got Ariana Fidanza and Jessa van den Bulke. Danny Christmas, uh, confirmation then on the right hand side drops. have got 43 points in the Queen of the Mountains, 22 to Sarah Tizit WNT. So it looks like drops for me will be the Queen of the Mountains winners of this race. Tomorrow we finish on the virtual Sean's Elise. As Danny Christmas continues with his climb, producing 4.7 watts a kilo, and that's hurting, isn't it? Look at that. Look at the face on Danny Christmas. This is painful as she goes clear from the group. Doing 62 revs a minute to produce 263 watts. Very impressive performance here by Danny Christmas. Another rider who came to cycling late, but has already been signed by this Lotto Sudal team, a Belgian team, of course. Now we're seeing the little yellow thumbs up going into the back pocket. And those are the ride-ons being given by the fans of the Zwift platform. This virtual racing and training platform that was used so extensively during the lockdown period of this pandemic. Around 30,000 riders were riding at any one time during a day. Races were being held, group rides were being held, and many riders spent a lot of time training on here, particularly riders who were locked down in countries where they weren't allowed to go outside. Riders accumulated a huge number of kilometers well the group is still numbering quite a few riders here and it looks like Danny Christmas slowly but surely is being brought back in the group it looks to me like there's quite a substantial number of riders maybe still around about 25 riders are still in the group as we get a glimpse here of Leah Dixon Leah out of the saddle. Team Tipco then are the leaders of this virtual Tour de France for women. Sara Gigante wearing that yellow jersey. And Team Tipco have got a plan, and the plan is being executed by the woman you can see in the background there. Lauren Stevens there riding strongly, but in the background is Rachel Hederman, who is the team director of Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. And Rachel was a top British rider who then went on to ride for a number of uh, different teams and ended up in the United States of America. She was the team director of United Healthcare, as we see Kristen Faulkner here, producing 326 watts, 174 beats a minute. Now we're on to one of the points on the course where you get a little bit of respite, so the pace will pick up. 
goalkeeper Rachel Hederman, Rachel Heal as she was called before she was married, was a British rider who rode at the time of Nicole Cook and was a strong supporter of her in many, many races. And Rachel has the, the record of being the only woman to have been a team director of a men's world tour race. She was the team director of United Healthcare in Milano San Remo a few years ago. So she's a very, very good person to be guiding this team, Tipco. And she takes it extremely, extremely seriously, this uh, virtual racing. Danny Christmas not coming back yet. 20 seconds now the advantage. Onto this 10% gradient. Well, as you can see with the effort on Danny Christmas's face, she is riding like any of you who ride bikes. If you go on an attack in a race, you literally are on the absolute limit. This is a 12% gradient now that we're on on this Mont Ventoux. So this takes us up to Chalet Reynard, which of course is extremely famous for all sorts of reasons. The Mont Ventoux is featured in the Tour de France, it's 1951. The first time we ever finished on the Mont Ventoux on the top of the climb was 1958. Looks to me like Danny's decided, right, I've had enough now. So she sits up. She decides to wait for the rest of the peloton to come back up to her. This effort has been a little bit too much to continue all the way to the top of the climb. So she slows right down to nine kilometers an hour. She's got herself in a position where she can just sit with the group so 1958 the first time we saw the Tour de France finish on the Mont Ventoux Charlie Gaulle of course was the winner of the Mont Ventoux most famous more recently for or well, the Chalet Reynard in particular more most famous more recently for the running of Chris Froome in the Tour de France in 2016 when he was caught up with that crash and ended up being forced to run when the race was finishing at Chalet Reynard because of high winds the day before. Sara Gigante, the yellow jersey wearer, up towards the front, sitting in about fourth place. Now, the riders managed to do some reconnaissance of this climb during the week. They were given the opportunity to do that. I've known a couple of people who decided to do the recon as well. And the feedback that I got from the climb was it's horrendous. So it doesn't sound like a very nice climb at all. And those of you at home seeing this for the first time and wondering, OK, how does this possibly simulate the Mont Ventoux? Well, the game, the Zwift platform that you're watching the avatars of here, as we say, Kirsten Weald with one of her teammates, necessarily her sort of terrain today. Kirsten Wheel, 273 watts, a world champion on the track. There she is. Riding there for Sarah Tizit WNT. But her watts per kilo aren't keeping her in this group at the moment on this 10% gradient. And it really does feel like you are on the mountain. So as I was saying, the game tells your trainer that you're riding on. That's the, they literally take the back wheel out of the bike, put it into the trainer, and it's called a smart trainer. So it can be controlled by the game. And the game will tell the trainer that the gradient is 10% and make it feel like that. So the riders actually have to change gear. They go uphill, they go downhill, they change up the gears so they can go faster. All sorts of uh, ways of riding and it really does feel like you're riding outside here's some power at the intermediate sprint the maximum watts and kirsten wield was producing 628 watts at the intermediate sprint today it's very high power output but kirsten wield one of the best track riders in the world multiple world champion eight and a half kilometers now to go 26 minutes have gone by and we're riding up to Chalet Reynard we haven't finished at Chalet Reynard too often but on that day when Chris Froome won the stage 
Uh, sorry, Chris Froome was running. The winner of the stage was Thomas de Ghent. He took the stage victory on that day, but people have tended to forget that he was the stage winner, which is a little bit of a shame because it was so overshadowed by Chris Froome running up the mountain. Kristen Faulkner. Kristen's had a very, very good race so far in this virtual Tour de France. Finished second on stage two, fifth on stage, second on stage one, fifth on stage two, fifth on stage three. And there she is. Riding away, different environment today. She's, looks like she's in the garage at home. Kristen Faulkner riding strongly again at the front of this group and Team Tipco will have a definite plan to play today to win this yellow jersey and secure it going on to the virtual Sean's Elise tomorrow. You noticed uh, when we got a glimpse of Lauren Stevens that Rachel Hederman was talking at the time. She was talking to Lauren but also the riders have their headphones on and they are talking on a gaming app called Discord. The team director will talk to the team and they can carry out road tactics the way they would do in a normal Tour de France. As we get a glimpse here of Ashley Moorman Passio, there she is at home in Rocca Corba in Girona, South African champion. And in the background, her husband, Carl Passio. She had a terrible week last week because uh, the tech didn't work for her. So she was thrown out of the Zwift platform. But Ashley is one of the race favorites today. She won three stages of the Zwift Tour for All. She won the mountain stage, which is a simulation of Alpe d'Huez. And Ashley is hoping to win today. She's out of the saddle. She has ridden on the Zwift platform more than most riders. I've been lucky enough to ride with her on a Sunday morning, every single Sunday in lockdown. And so every Sunday morning, she has a group of riders who ride with her on Zwift, talk to her on the Discord channel, and you learn a huge amount about Zwift, about bike riding, about training, about nutrition, about everything else. And I've been lucky enough to be uh, invited by her onto that every single Sunday. Gets you out of bed on a Sunday morning. She meets at 9 a.m every Sunday and the group just talk away to her. Quite often she'll have gone out. There's Joss Loudon on the left-hand side. Quite often Ash will have gone out for an hour before. She comes back in, she gets on Zwift, she rides for an hour and generally goes out for at least another hour, if not another two hours after we have ridden with her. And by the end of the hour with her on Zwift, we're all tired out and she's ready to go out for another couple of hours, quite often with intervals as well but she understands this platform very, very well. Towards the front then, the top 10 riders, Kristen Faulkner, Danny Christmas, Ella Harris, Joss Loudon, Sarah Gigante, Leah Dixon is there, Krista Doble Hickok as well. Courtney Nelson is up the front, so is Lauren Steven. So, so far we are seeing uh, a relatively good day for Tipco and a good day also for Team of 2020. The group contains around about, uh, I think about 15 riders now. Lorta Mackay is also in here for Team Sunweb, winner of Ghent Wavelgum. Leanne Lippert is there and I'm just looking I think Kasha Niwa Dom has been dropped from the group but we'll just double check here is the group of riders 7.3 kilometers to go the yellow jersey on the front and here is Lauren Stevens well, I think Lauren has now moved from the United States into Europe for the start of the cycling season coming back on the 1st of August with Strada Bianchi Lauren just out of the saddle. Just trying to keep the pressure on. This moment in time, 175 beats a minute. So you can see how hard these athletes are having to work.
13% gradient now on the Mont Ventoux. Now the last race we had where there was a major climb like this, this is the only time we've raced on the, the Mont Ventoux itself, was on the Zwift Tour for All on this platform, the Queen stage on a virtual Alp d'Huez. And the winner was Ashley Mulman Passio. Second place was Ella Harris of Canyon Shram. Third place was Sara Gigante. Fifth place was Krista Doble Hickok, who's also in this group. And Joss Loudon was in sixth place. Now, most of these riders are in there, or all of these riders actually are in this group again. Now, here is the team of Tipco, Silicon Valley Bank. Sara Gigante on the right. Left hand side, Lauren Stevens. And Lauren Stevens always looks so calm and collected. Looks very, very easy, doesn't she? It'll be interesting to see when someone decides to launch an attack. Paulina Royak is now on the front. Now we mentioned earlier on about the team tactics and the riders will ride as though they're in a road race. They will use similar tactics. And Paulina Royak is, is a teammate of Ashley Moorman Passio. And Ashley will have asked her to go to the front and try and make life a little bit difficult for the rest of the riders. She finished sixth on stage two of the race. That was a climbing day. And it looks like she's doing a similar thing here, trying to soften this race up a little bit. Going with her is Kristen Faulkner. On the front of the peloton right now is Ashley Moorman Passio. But Roy Ackers now trying to go clear. She's ridden a fair amount on this platform. Certainly uh, Ashley's managed to motivate her team to ride on this platform as much as possible during lockdown. As we see now the arrival of Ashley Moorman Passio onto the wheel of Paulina Roeackers. And I think all the riders are expecting maybe an attack from Ashley Moorman Passio on this climb. She also rode a lot of races during lockdown, including winning on many, many climbs. Leah Dixon now towards the front. Sara Gigante in the yellow jersey. So the group is starting to really calm down now as far as the number of riders in this front group. It looks to me there's around 11, 12 riders who are still in here. Ella Harris is still in here for Canyon Shram. Dobal Hickok is in here too. Danny Christmas riding really strongly after that early attack. The front group then is, yeah, numbers 11 riders, maybe 12 riders. It's Kristen Faulkner now tries to start to accelerate. Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank, one of the oldest uh, sponsored teams in the world of women's cycling. Started in California, based in Palo Alto, outside uh, California. As we get a glimpse here of Sara Gigante again. You see the Australian colours around the cuff of her jersey. Concentrating extremely hard, isn't she? She puts the pressure on. She wants to do this jersey proud. And so far, in that front group, Kristen Faulkner is there. Leah Dixon is there. Lauren Stevens is there. So the entire Team Tibco are in that group. Here is Krista Doble Hickok riding for Team Rally. She was fifth on the Queen stage of the Zwift Tour for All. A lot of these riders, as you can see on the balconies of their apartments and everything, they've a lot of them have now moved to Europe. 
to get ready for racing and they dearly hope that racing starts in fact some of them will be riding races in spain this week which will be the first women's races back but the first women's world tour race will be strada bianchi if you'd like to ask any questions about zwift or you'd like to get in touch please get in touch on twitter at Ant McCrossan is where you can join me during the racing. As Ashley Mulman Passio now just starts to extend the pace a little bit, and the group is starting to go with her. And she's decided now that it's time to start to accelerate. 5.8 kilometres to go. Coming back to her is Leah Dixon, the Welsh rider from Team Tipco. So they immediately react to that attack. And another big attack here from Danny Christmas. This is a wonderful performance here by Danny Christmas today. Sara Gigante now attacks. Huge attack by the yellow jersey. Puts the pace up to 6.2 watts per kilo. And Ashley Mormon Passio uses that as a chance to go clear. So it's the yellow jersey and Mulman Passio with five and a half kilometers to go. Two seconds back to the group. Joss Loudon, the queen of the mountains, pedals across. Annie Christmas going with them and then again, another big attack by Christmas. Gigante just measuring the effort nicely, looks to me like She's working hard at 167 beats a minute. And just to just calm down a little bit out of the saddle. Danny Christmas of Lotto Sudal, 32 years of age. Sitting in the group now. Ashley Moorman Passia. Getting a little bit of ice on her now. She's down in Girona in Spain. It's very, very warm down there. So they're just trying to keep her as cool as possible for this uh, final climb to the top. Carl in the background. He'll be giving her little bits of information, just keeping her motivated. These two, a really good team. But Gigante now is going clear with a slender advantage. Woman Passio just rides back across to her again. 340 watts Sara Gigante putting out. This young Australian rider is so talented. Very, very impressive indeed. Came to prominence when she won the Australian Road Race Championship, really, in 2019 and then backed it up with the time trial win in 2020. She's so powerful. You think she's only 19 years of age. How much more has she got in her career? Very, uh, it'll be very interesting to watch her and see how she does. Now the acceleration of Mulman Passio is starting to stretch the race. And the face on Ashley Mulman Passio says to me that she's going on the attack. And she is going on the attack big time. 6.1, 6.9 watts per kilo. This is a concerted effort to try and win the stage. Out of the saddle, doing a huge effort now. Mulman Passio starting to get rid of the entire group, but only Sara Gigante is able to stay with her. 10 seconds now, back to the main group of riders. There's really only eight or nine riders left in this race. Joss Loudon at 12 seconds. Well, Tipco will be happy that they've got Sara Gigante in the lead. And there's the two riders in the group. Top of the picture, Gigante putting out 317 watts. Mormon Passio at 2.72. Gigante just took on a little bit of nutrition. You may wonder, do these riders need to fuel up during the race? Well, they certainly do. Ashley says that she would normally take one or two gels 
She'll have electrolytes in the bottle. It's a incredibly hard effort, this simulated bike racing. Well, it looks to me like they've managed to break clear, but on this sort of gradient, there is the possibility of riders coming back, particularly the likes of Lauren Stevens or Leah Dixon. Ella Harris now starting to drop away at 33 seconds. Harris, the winner of the Zwift Academy and an extremely good climber. Tibco Silicon Valley Bank with a load of riders around here, the front of the peloton. In fact, all their riders are there apart from Gigante who's up the road. Joss Loudon, over the last uh, couple of weekends, we've been impressed with her. We've been impressed the way she rode to secure the points for the drops team. There she is, taking on a little bit of nutrition. She's trying to keep herself hydrated. She'll be riding in uh, Great Britain at the moment, I think. It's a very, very warm day in the south of England. So she'll just be making sure that she keeps the electrolytes going in. The drops team, which was started by Bob Varney a few years ago, and they've really been a feeder team for other squads. But they announced recently their ambitions to try and be a world tour team now and looking for a sponsor to try and help them do that. Back with the Harvard graduate, Kristen Faulkner. As she continues with this effort, works for a venture capitalist and rides as a professional bike rider. Manages to mix both careers. Must be very, very hard to juggle at times. And that's the way that the American team is structured. Some of the riders full-time, some of the riders have got other careers that they follow. But in terms of some of the other riders, if we look through, the women's peloton is becoming more and more a peloton of full-time bike riders. A few years ago, there really wasn't many full-time riders. But the likes of Ashley Mulman Passio and other riders are all now full-time. There's now a number of teams who've got uh, world tour level status, which means that they're able to comply with the minimum salaries and all the constraints that go with it to try and increase the profile of women cycling and also ensure that the work status of these riders is what it should be that the riders earn a decent salary, that they are looked after, that they have decent structures. Richie, thanks for your message. Are there any Irish riders taking part in the women's race? I don't think there are actually, but there are in the men's race. And Martin is riding this afternoon and he is in the polka dot jersey for the Israel team. Nicholas Roach also riding in the men's race later on. Well, this gap is going out and it's going out substantially. Nearly one minute now for Mulman Passio and Gigante. Here's our breakaway group, three and a half kilometers to go to the top. Mulman Passio was the rider who did the damage. Gigante's been able to measure her effort and stay with her. And these are the two riders from different parts of the world locked in combat. Well, whilst everyone's had to uh, stay at home and not be able to go out on their bikes, this platform certainly has provided great entertainment and a wonderful way of riders being able to get that competitive spirit to continue to fuel that competitive edge and spirit that they have. And these two riders, I mean, the way you look at them, they literally are riding how you would do on a mountain in a stage of the Tour de France. Look at the effort they're putting in. They're both out the saddle 
They're both putting in huge amounts of power right now. Their heart rate's up at 175 for Gigante, 183 for Mulman Passio. They've now climbed 1,141 meters. The total climbing today around about 1,207. Confirmation then on the right-hand side of the screen. The damage has been done. One minute and three seconds back to a peloton led by the Sunweb rider Floor to Mackay. Behind her is Faulkner. Ella Harris has found her way back into the group. Ella Harris in one of the Zwift for All stages was so impressive. She had a technical problem at the start and she rode at over five and a half watts per kilo for the entire race and almost came back to the peloton. Faulkner now able to just relax a little bit at the moment with her team. Looking at the standings, the overall yellow jersey standings, 277 to 219. And Tipco are doing themselves big favours today. Drops at 219 and drops have only got Joss Loudon in this front group. So for me, Tipco are doing the business today because they've got one rider in the breakaway group and the rest of their riders are all in the chase group. Tipco this afternoon could put this yellow jersey out of reach. Put themselves in a position where they ride on the Champs-Élysées tomorrow just looking for the stage. 1 minute 24 seconds now the advantage on a peloton being led by Mackay, Harris, Faulkner, Krista Doble Hickok, Joss Loudon, Leah Dixon, Paulino Royakas, teammate of Ashley Mulman Passio, Leah Dixon, Lauren Stevens, Victoria Gilman. So 12 riders in the race now in terms of a peloton of chasers or group of chasers and this front group. So two riders and a group of 10. Underneath the next arch on the road, two and a half kilometers to go. So 2,500 meters of climbing remain on this queen stage of the virtual Tour de France. Moment Passio continues to set the tempo. Right for the team of Mariana Voss. I haven't seen Mariana in any of the races so far. But the team overall, they're lying fifth overall in the team classification. So this performance by Mulman Passio and her teammate Paulina Royakas, who's in fifth place on the climb at the moment, it's going to help them to move up a little bit. But most important for them, I think, will be the possibility of winning a stage. Oh, and Passio out the saddle again. Looks to me like another acceleration by the South African rider. Now she's trying to go clear. 167 beats a minute. Gigante comes back up to her wheel. The yellow jersey refusing to give in. Oh, and Passio with her radio in her ear. She'll be on the Discord channel listening to her teammates. Norman Passio has got a new coach this season. So she's been doing very long structured training programs, which are hours a day. You can see the strength of her now as they both put out 7.6 watts per kilo. This attack by Norman Passio now trying to crack Sara Gigante. Gigante just dropping by three seconds. Is this the hammer blow that Norman Passio has been looking for? This is a huge acceleration by the South African as she tries to go clear now to win the stage. 1,900 metres to go to the top. The work rate, 185 beats a minute. You can see the sweat on her arms. She really is trying to put everyone to the sword now. Can Gigante manage to come back to her? 
Or is this the breakaway of Ashley Mormon Passio? There's the gap on the Mont Ventoux. Mormon Passio still producing 6.7 watts per kilo. Gigante, 5.8 watts per kilo. The difference is there. And now you see, similar to uh, when you see a rider crack a little bit on the road, the shoulders are going. She's looking down, the legs are hurting. Can Gigante get back? It's been a wonderful performance by this young Australian. Sara Gigante out the saddle again, just trying to limit the losses, but Mulman Passio has cracked her now, I think. Can she just calm down and come back to the wheel of the South African? 13 seconds. This is stage five of the virtual Tour de France. Simulated bike racing on the Zwift platform. 10% gradient now for Ashley Mulman Passio. Gigante, still all right, you know, those legs are not totally cracked. Still producing 5.8 watts per kilo. And anyone who's ever ridden on a bike ever with a power meter will know that the possibility of riding f over five watts per kilo for any sustained amount of time is extremely tough. Gigante, 14 seconds, but she's still in the background. Now let's remember the riders have power-ups which they collect when they go underneath an archway, and there will be a power-up at 1,000 metres to go. The power-up they're really looking for on this climb is the featherweight power-up. It reduces your weight by 9.5 watts, 9.5 kilos for 15 seconds, and the power-ups are given randomly. If Ashley Mulman Passio sees that as a power-up under that arch, she'll use it in the last few hundred metres just to sustain the effort and go away 17 seconds now to gigante underneath the red kite for the leader of the penultimate stage the queen stage of the virtual tour de france for women ashley mormon passio has sustained a huge effort on this climb Sara Gigante goes underneath the red kite, 20 seconds behind now in the yellow jersey. Remember, it's a team contest, so Tibco lead the team classification. And this performance by Gigante is putting Tibco in a very good position to win the yellow jersey overall. That will be their objective this weekend. Whilst there's been no bike racing anywhere in the world, the bringing together of all the riders across the continent to ride and simulated racing has been all they've really had, but actually they've taken it with both hands and they've raced hard. As Ashley Milman Passio now arrives at the inflatable Didi the Devil. First appeared Didi in 1993 in the Tour de France on the roads of the Tour. And so we in the virtual world salute him with a, an inflatable Didi across the road. There he is. Now 68 years of age, the real devil. And we see him on the Tour de France and many Tour de France events during the year. 56 minutes of effort, 400 metres to go for the South African Ashley Mulman Passio of CCC Live being cheered on in the background by her husband, Carl Passio. Not long now until she reaches the final metres of this climb to the Mont Ventoux, to Chalet Reynard. Not far away is the Tom Simpson Memorial on this uh, virtual climb as well. But so many bike riders salute when they arrive at it. Milman Passio now over 300 watts as she gets to the barrier line. Behind her, 21 seconds to Gigante. 159 she's taken out of the rest of the group. Well, she was the pre-race favorite in many people's eyes, but Milman Passio is gonna win this stage. It's going to be the queen stage for the South African from CCC Live. 
Ashley Mulmontasio arrives at the top of this climb at Chalet Reynard to win stage five of the women's virtual Tour de France. A wonderful climb by the South African. All smiles from Ashley Mulmontasio. Second place. Well, Australian Sara Gigante, what a great performance by her. She's going to come in just over 20 seconds down. She crosses the line in second place to give Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank a chance now of securing that jersey. There she is as she rides past Ashley Mulman Passio. Now it's about the next places on the road. Third place on the road at the moment is Danny Christmas. I think may well have just accelerated away. She's just up the road. And then behind her is Kristen Faulkner of Team Tipco. And Danny Christmas going for third place on this climb. Well, the British rider for Lotto Sudal. Looking for Lotto Sudal's first podium finish in this virtual Tour de France. Can she get there now? Not too far to go. Kristen Faulkner in fourth place. Coming up to her now, is she going to deny Danny Christmas a podium? Christmas just needs to put in a little bit more effort, but look at this. Kristen Faulkner is going to try and give Tipco Silicon Valley Bank third place and give them second and third overall. More accelerations, and it's coming from Tipco all the time as they go for the line. And a couple of power-ups being used by two Tipco riders, Leah Dixon and Lauren Stevens. So Lauren Stevens, I think, gets third. Leah Dixon, fourth. Kristen Faulkner, fifth. So Tipco Silicon Valley Bank, second, third, fourth, and fifth on the climb. That is very impressive. And I think that, without any doubt, gives them the yellow jersey in Paris. Danny Christmas absolutely finished. She is the most combative rider of the day. Very well deserved. She's voted by all of you as the most aggressive rider of this stage, and she's absolutely finished. That's what it's like physically to ride a stage of the virtual Tour de France. You are in pieces at the end. Two more riders making their way up towards the top of the climb. Courtney Nelson just getting caught by Leanne Lippert. Leanne Lippert now of Team Sunweb. Making her way to the Chalet Reynard. Sprinting hard then, Leanne Lippert. 8.6 watts per kilo. Very big effort by her. Making her way to the line. Courtney Nelson of Team 2020 will secure some points in around 14th place. It's going to be another three or a couple of minutes then until the next group of riders comes in, which contains Kasia Niwa, Dolma, Hannah Barnes and other riders. But let's take a look at the classification of today's stage. Stage five of the Virtual Tour de France, won by Ashley Mulman Passio of CCC, live in 57 minutes and 10 seconds ahead of all of Team Tipco. They take second, third and fourth and fifth places on today's stage. They're the team who lead the general classification. Behind them, a great performance by Danny Christmas, who takes the most combative rider of the stage. Remember, points will be for the top 25 riders. The shots there of Ashley Mulman Passio. The smile breaks out after that massive effort. That's a very important moment for her and her team in this virtual Tour de France. She's 
very much spoken a lot about the development of women's cycling. She dreams of a women's type of Tour de France. She's got very strong views about it, and she will be extremely pleased to win a stage of the virtual Tour de France. For well, those of you watching, I hope you've enjoyed seeing how the virtual tour works on the Mont Ventoux. In a few moments, we're going to hear from the winner of stage five of the women's Tour de France, Ashley Moulman Passio. Ashley Moorman Passio, winner of stage five of the virtual Tour de France. Well, I think it's safe to say today was the queen stage and there's no doubt that you've become the queen of Zwift as far as climbs are concerned. Talk us through your emotions on winning a stage of the virtual Tour de France. Yeah, it was really great to win today um, for my CCC Live team. Um, yeah, luckily uh, no, no um, technical problems today. Uh, last week was a little bit disappointing. Um, with a, a dropout during uh, to the stage. So I was very happy to have a smooth ride today and yeah, great to take the stage. Sara Gigante really pushed you hard on that climb. Were you always confident that you could go away or did you start to be concerned at all that the 19 year old Australian was gonna give you a really good run all the way to the line? Well, there's no doubt that she's a great talent. Um, that was already very evident during uh, the tour for all. So yeah, great ride from her. Um, but yeah, I, I did feel confident. Um, you know, I was kind of, you know, keeping it smooth and keeping um, the the real, you know, push or surge um, for the last couple of um, kilometers. So, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with uh, my ride, but um, also a really impressive ride from Sarah Giganti. Ashley, one final question. Then uh, I know you've dreamt of winning on the Mont Ventoux and both in real life, but also in terms of winning virtually. And for women cycling and for, for you as a team, how important was it to have a virtual Tour de France and for the women to be given an equal platform to the men? Well, yeah, I mean, I think um, the, the racing on Zwift has been really great for women cycling. Um, you know, just seeing it already with the Tour for All. Um, really, it's a lot of appreciation. I have a lot of appreciation um, for Zwift and for the push that they sort of give women cycling. You know, everything that they do, um, they make it their mission to, to do everything equal and to give us equal racing, equal exposure. Um, so I must say, it's really great to have brands like Zwift and um, forward-thinking brands that are really pushing women cycling forward and giving us the platform because when we're given the platform, there's no doubt that there is an appetite um, to watch our racing. So, yeah, I mean, hats off to all involved and um, a big thanks to Zwift and all involved for this great opportunity. Thank you very much, Ashley. Winner of stage five of the virtual Tour de France, South African champion from CCC Live. Congratulations. Thanks, Ant. A great performance, Ashley Moorman Passio. A great performance by Ashley Moorman Passio, the winner of this stage for CCC Live. Well, I know that when she heard that there was going to be a virtual Mont Ventoux stage, she started getting ready because she wanted to win this stage. Sara Gigante, great performance by her to take second place. And what a day for Team Tipco with four riders in the top five to secure the yellow jersey. I think there's no doubt whatsoever that that performance today by them has put them in the driving seat to win this race overall. Well, don't forget also that we will have the men's race coming up. We have got a huge field in terms of the names of riders taking part in this virtual Tour de France this afternoon. The women have put on a spectacular show on the Mont Ventoux. We saw some great racing on the slopes. Let's take a look then at the classifications on the penultimate stage. The yellow jersey on the shoulders of Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank. 409 points now. 
they will wear the yellow jersey tomorrow on the Sean's Elysee with drops in second. And Canyon Shram are now starting to close in on team drops. So the podium is still to be decided. Here's the green jersey classification. Canyon Shram, 214 points now to Team Tibco's 197. The gap is closing between Tibco and Canyon Shram now with drops in third place. They maintain their position with CCC live in fourth. Still all to play for for the podium tomorrow on the final day. Queen of the Mountains. Well, Team Tipco Silicon Valley Bank actually now take over because there were points at the top of the climb, so drops are in second place, 69 to 51 for Tipco. And that means that they're probably now going to secure that Queen of the Mountains jersey as well. Five stages down then in this women's virtual Tour de France. Two stage wins so far for drops, a stage win for Tibco, a stage win for Canyon Shram, and today a stage win for CCC Live. Ashley Mormon Passio then. On the attack in the final few kilometers of today's stage. Let's take a look at the highlights of today's stage. The Ladain stage, the Queen stage, the riders all across the world. Simulated bike racing. Danny Christmas, the most combative rider of the stage for Lotto Sudal. But on the mountain, it was all about two riders, Sara Giganti. But Ashley Norman Passio, too strong. She went on the attack, actually. She used her featherweight power up at the time. Great racing. Ashley Norman Passio wins the Queen stage of the Virtual Tour de France. Well, over the last few weekends, it has all been about Team NTT, who have been the dominant team in this race as far as the classifications are concerned. The men's racing now, NTT are the leaders with 263 points, rally on 188. But Trek Segafredo now in third place overall. It's a very important day for Team NTT. It is Mandela Day. It is a day that for them as an African team, they celebrate and they celebrate in style. NTT, 188 points in the green jersey contest with Mitchelton Scott in second place. As far as the King of the Mountains is concerned, today it will be worn by Dan Martin of Israel Startup Nation, 28 points he has. Alps and Phoenix in second place. And the best young rider classification, NTT are the leaders, but it's still close between them, Team Ineos, and Rally Cycling and Group Armour FDJ. NTT will be looking to try and secure that classification as well. Let's take a look then at some of the teams or the teams that are taking part in today's race. Rowan Dennis riding for Team Ineos. Also riding is Julian Alaphilippe, Rigoberto Aran, Michael Woods, Warren Barguil, 
Roman Bardet, Dan Martin, also Adam Yates riding for Mitchelton Scott, Jan Bakalans also in the field as well, Simon Geschke, Eros Kapeki, Lewis Menkes, who will be in the yellow jersey for Team NTT. And that's the rest of the 22 teams now who are taking part in this virtual Tour de France. Let's take a look then at the stage. We've already seen it in the women's race. The riders will be going through the sprint point, 6.98 kilometers of racing through the third category climb at 10.85 and then the run in to the finish. We look down on the peloton who have covered six and a half kilometers so far in this race. Lewis Menkes towards the front in the yellow jersey. Rolling along at 50 kilometers an hour so far. So a very, very fast pace being set in the initial stages of today's stage. Through the sprint point and at the front it was I think Benoit Cosnefroy, who was the rider who rolled through there first, but we'll just double check when we see the results, because also up there was Kiel Reinen and also uh, a couple of other riders, including uh, Roy Jans. He was near the front as well. So we're not far then from the bottom of the climb. And then it's all about the rise up to the top of the Chalet Reynard at the Mont Ventoux. It takes us to about two thirds of the way up the Mont Ventoux. Now in terms of how this virtual Mont Ventoux has been built, there's lots of inspiration up the climb where the bottom of the climb is very much a of France as far as uh, bright and colourful fields are concerned, flowers in the fields as well, as we see the under-23 world champion in his career, Benoit Cosnefroy, riding for Agi Désert Le Mondial. He's just talking to his teammates. They're on a training camp at the moment, so a lot of these teams are now in their bubbles as far as how they will ride the races are concerned, so a lot of the teams have been split up into various bubbles of groups of around 10 riders. And confirmation then that Cosnefroy did win the sprint. Roy Jans was in second place, then it was Russo, then Kilreinen, and twos of Corfidis in fifth place. Tish Banuk just took a little bit of a turn there. He's up towards the front of the group now. Tish Benut riding for Team Sunweb. And an attack by one of the members of Rally, Carl Murphy now going on the move. Rolling along here with about 187 beats a minute. Just had a little escapade off the front but now starting to be brought back. Don't forget that during the race, you can vote for your rider who's the most aggressive rider of the stage. Danny Christmas was the rider who took that in the women's race. Carl Murphy sporting a superb beard there on the left-hand side. Three hundred and eighty-three watts at the moment for Carl Murphy. Heart rate very, very high at this moment. Oh, he's got the jersey unzipped. The heart rate monitor is showing us 184 beats. Just to run through for you then the various leaders' jerseys. Luis Menkes is in the yellow jersey, riding for NTT. Domenico Pozzo Vivo is in the green jersey. Dan Martin in the King of the Mountains. Stefan de Bod in the white jersey. 
but the peloton still pretty large as we head towards the lower slopes. Lewis Menkes, 316 watts for Lewis Menkes at the moment, who's had a haircut since last weekend. Just trying to stay there, stay in the group. The team all together in NTT. Big day for them today, it's Mandela Day. And on their avatars, on the back, there's a little motif saying 67. There's Domenico Pozzovivo. He is in the virtual green jersey today. Stage winner Giro d'Italia. Fifth place overall in the Giro as well. But on the avatars of the NTT riders, number 67, they are doing a day of uh, lots of trying to motivate everybody in terms of riding bikes and doing good. So they've asked everyone to do something 67 for good today. As we see Dan Martin, he's in the polka dot jersey. Dan Martin a little bit further back on this Mont Ventoux climb. The Team Israel Startup Nation have been on a training camp for the last week. I think Dan will be pretty tired today. They've been training at altitude in Andorra, where he actually does live anyway. So today may be a day where those legs are very much hurting. Coming up towards the King of the Mountains point. NTT now have 194 points. And just to clarify that there are mountain points on the finish line today in the Vontu stage. And that's why in the women's race, the drops team have lost the Queen of the Mountains jersey. It will be the same for the men. There are points on the finish as well as the intermediate point, which we're coming up to now. Quentin Pacher trying to get the King of the Mountains. Jonas Riker trying to take them. Big acceleration as we head towards this point now. Janssens is also up there. Pozzovivo not too far behind, but that's a good climb by Jonas Reichert. Rides for the Alpecin uh, Fenix team. And he'll be really pleased with that performance on that climb. Alpecin are 11 points behind Israel in the King of the Mountains contest. Midway point pretty much now. 15 minutes of racing have gone by. Near the front is Rigoberto Aran. Eight percent now the gradient, so it's started to bite a little bit. Now you'll notice all the little icons appearing above the riders in a little circle. And that's the power-ups being used by riders. There are five different power-ups the riders can choose to use if they are given them. So underneath the archway, they pick up a power-up, and that power-up is randomly chosen for the rider. And the riders will use them, and then they'll pick another one up at another archway. So a Queen of the Mount, a King of the Mountains point, uh, an archway across the road, one kilometre to go, etc. Roman Bardet, there on the screen. Riding for Aji Desire uh, Le Mondial and taking this very seriously, sitting in fourth place in the group. But Roman is a rider who will take anything as far as competition seriously. And he's looking comfortable in this group at the moment. He's actually ridden Swift a lot. He's a level 17 rider. You start at zero and work your way up. Ridden 2,246 kilometers on Swift. So he knows what it's all about. And knowing Roman, who's, in terms of technology and thought and tactics and things like that, he'll have thought this one out. And he'll be looking just to test himself this afternoon. He's certainly staying near the front. Did an interesting interview during the week where he talked about the leadership of the team for the Tour de France, the real Tour de France. And it's going to be shared between him and Pierre Latour. And Latour is riding this afternoon as well. 
a tour former white jersey of the Tour de France. But Bardet has said that's the way that they're going to ride. They're going to ride as a dual leadership. And Bardet really thinking about the World Championships. I think he wants to remove the pressure of being a sole team leader of a team in the Tour. Sometimes it doesn't quite suit him. I know last year he had a, a day he just didn't, a year he just didn't enjoy on the Tour. There's our collage of riders all across the world riding in various different places whether it be their apartments at home training camps garages on the balconies as we take a look here at Julien Alaphilippe Alaphilippe what a wonderful tour de France he gave us last year he actually gave the French the thought that he might win the tour de France I'm not necessarily thinking here that he's competitive in this race He's certainly sweating a lot, but I can't see that Julian is currently in the front group. But he certainly last year, didn't he, gave us some moments of, wow, this could actually happen. Michael Woods going clear for EF Education first. Mountains classification, as you can see on the right. Israel with 28 points, Alpes and Phoenix with 21 and EF Education first with 10, linked on the same points with Kofidis. Michael Woods currently using the aero power-up, makes him more aerodynamic for 15 seconds. On the mountain, it will help him a little bit. The algorithm of Zwift does work out whether it's going to help him or not, and he's on the point of the course, actually, where you start to speed up. So that aero power-up is going to help him quite considerably at that point. There he is on the left. Now the saddle. Working really hard on the platform. A great athlete, Michael Woods. Sub-four-minute mile runner. Turned to cycling, and he's turned to cycling with great effect. 413 watts now for the Canadian as he goes past one of the members of Jumbo Visma, Jonas Rasmussen. And the green jersey, Domenico Pozzovivo coming up for NTT. So I was mentioning before that the avatar of the rider today, as far as NTT are concerned, it's got a little motif with number 67 on it. And that's to commemorate the 67 years of Nelson Mandela campaigning against social campaigning for social justice NTT of course had a famous day in 2015 on Mandela Day when Steve Cummings won a stage of the Tour de France a famous day when he beat Bardet and he beat uh, Thibaut Pino as we take a look here at Rigoberto Uran there he is he's got the best setup hasn't he the leather sofa, the mascot in the background, the pink set up to match his team kit with the carpet underneath him. Everything there is all set up perfectly. As we see Adam Yates, 188 watts. Adam Yates is set up a little bit more white. Lives in Andorra. Him and uh, brother Simon rode on Zwift a lot during the lockdown period. He's actually level 33 on Zwift. He's ridden 7,258 kilometers on this platform itself. So who are the favorites really of today's stage? Well, many have named Rowan Dennis as a favorite. I'm not necessarily sure Rowan will win today. I had a little bit of a conversation with him earlier on. They've been doing a huge amount of training. Big, big block of training. So he's not as fresh as he would normally be for Zwift. But Philippe is in here, but I don't think it's come maybe his day. But for me, the likes of Rigoberto Aran, Roman Bardet, Michael Woods, those sort of riders for me, Luis Menkes, Nico Roach, are riders that we can maybe watch out for today. Nicholas Roach set the record for this Montfond to climb yesterday in a reconnaissance ride.
Now, don't forget that you can vote for your most aggressive rider of the day. As we see Pozzaviva on the left-hand side, go to at Le Tour and you can vote for your most aggressive rider of the day. Women's race was Danny Christmas. So who's going to be your most aggressive rider of the day? In the men's race, David Williamson has messaged me in today. Is Edvold Bosenhagen racing? No, he's not. He's not racing. He's going to race tomorrow on the Sean's Elysee. Dorian, thanks for your message. As we see Eddie Dunbar, you would like to see a few more cows, a few more vash in the field around uh, Zwift. We'll see whether we can see whether Zwift listen to us. And that's from the couch peloton who uh, we must say hello to this afternoon. Trying not to go viral. Sorry you missed the explanation earlier, but do the smart trainers account for drafting or not? On the Zwift platform, there is drafting. The algorithm does work that if you sit on the wheel of the rider in front, you will keep around 20 to 30 percent of your energy use as compared to if you were sitting on the front of the group. So, yep, you sit in the draft and you do feel like you are sitting in the draft of a rider on the road. Not quite 100 percent the same, but all about as good as you can get on a virtual platform itself. Here is our yellow jersey. You can see the number 67 below the, the number on the shorts of Lewis Menkes, commemorating Mandela Day. Can he bring home the day for NTT again on this virtual Mont Ventoux? The South African has already won on Mandela Day for CCC Live for the women's race. Can a South African win the men's race as well? Lewis Menkes, the orange socks on today. Earlier on, a number of the NTT riders took part in a special ride on Zwift with a number of fans to help commemorate this day as well. And a power up being used by Eddie Dunbar. Roman Barde now being dropped, I think. So Barde unable to go with the acceleration of the group he was there and he was riding well in fact no he's seventh on my readout i don't know if he's still seventh on the road in fact he is so the group is starting to split quite considerably Barde on the nine percent gradient he's not too far from the front but the front is starting to go away first place rider michael woods on his wheel is Domenico Pozzavivo. On his wheel is Luis Menkes. The two NTT riders in a perfect position. Next on the road is Eddie Dunbar. Then it's Stefan de Bod, the white jersey. And then it's Ben O'Connor. So NTT are producing a Team Tipco kind of simulation here. Tipco had four riders in the top five. And currently, NTT have four riders in the top six. Former King of the Mountains of the Tour de France, Warren Barguil, two stage wins uh, 2018. There he is, French champion. Out the saddle, 155 beats a minute on the climb. Still having to produce nearly 300 watts at 85 revs to keep going at 14 kilometers an hour. This is not easy. Well, Michael Woods really starting to stretch the group. Seven kilometres to go. Michael Woods, 33 years of age now. As we look here at Lewis Menkes. His avatar. It rides quite like Lewis Mekkes. 
to drop away a little bit here though as they go underneath one of the archways across the road they should get a power a new power up So he should now pick another power up and that will help him if he wants to attack the riders who are with him. Winner Milano Torino, stage winner of the Vuelta, you'll remember in 2018. That's when Michael Woods really came to prominence, was second in Liège, Baston Liège, third in the World Championships. This sort of effort for him is an effort that he likes. And EF Education first, looking to try and secure many more points. They're currently lying down in the classification. Pozzavivo trying to stay with the acceleration of Woods now. Pozzavivo goes to the front though and decides to put on the pressure. Vivo being watched by Biana Reese at the moment in the background. And Vivo now attacks. Going clear in the green jersey for NTT on Mandela Day. They are looking to bring home another stage win. They've already won stage number one with Ryan Gibbons. They are leading three classifications. Pozzavivo now being called by his teammate in the yellow jersey, Luis Menkes. Stefan de Bod and Ben O'Connor are in the top five. So four riders from the same team in the top five as Pozzavivo tries to go away now with the yellow jersey. Thanks for all your messages. Thanks for getting in touch today. At Ant McCrossin is where you can join me. Don't forget to go to the hashtag TDF United. We are supporting one of the charities that this team of NTT supports. So Quebeca is one of our charities. And there are five charities in total that we're supporting during this virtual Tour de France. Here's our leading group of three riders on this penultimate stage of the men's virtual Tour de France. Australian insider, thanks for your message. Lots of discussion going on about drafting in terms of Zwift. The pros, when they're racing on here, they say that the chances of breaking away, I do agree, are difficult on Zwift until the gradient gets to 7%. So now we're at 9%, and they've said that in particular, when it gets to around 7%, if you attack, then uh, the chances of you breaking away from your competition is much, much increased. So the algorithm has to be worked out by the riders as well, of course, because it is a virtual platform for training and racing, but it's also a game. So you've got to work the game out. And I think that's why Rally did so well in winning stage number three because they've been having a little bit of expert tuition on making sure that they understand the game as well as understanding the fact that they've got the physical capability to win the stage. Eddie Dunbar, Team Ineos, the Irishman. Yet another Irishman in this field. So Nico Roach, Eddie Dunbar, Dan Martin, all in the group. Dunbar just trying to stay with this uh, group of the white jersey and Ben O'Connor. Still lots of talk about Team Ineos as we head towards the 
presumption of racing. Lots of discussion about Chris Froome and the fact that he's going to Israel Startup Nation. He will be riding tomorrow on final, the final stage of this year's race. And there's our timeline. 51 seconds now. The trio of riders at the front have removed from the group. Eddie Dunbar, third in the Tour of Yorkshire last season. Dunbar, probably best known for winning the Tour of Flanders under 23 race, I would say, right now. He finished third on a stage of the Giro in 2019 as well. Eddie Dunbar, in, early in his career, he was first really noticed when he rode for a British team called NFTO, same team that Adam Blythe rode for when he came back from the World Tour before he went back to ride for Team Tinkoff. And Eddie Dunbar did an interview and said that he, would, he wanted to win the Tour de France. And no one's really believed him, but his first Grand Tour major performance, 22nd in the Giro, 2019. Now that says that this rider has Grand Tour potential. Three riders in the lead. Michael Woods of EF Education first. Domenico Pozzavivo, stage winner Giro d'Italia. Luis Menkes. Woods has got to think about how he gets rid of the two NTT riders. It's going to come down to maybe the right power up to use or just feeling better than they are today. Power up being used by Luis Menkes. He's using the aero power-up. That's the thing about the game. The riders don't know what power-ups the other riders have. They only have one they're holding at any one time. And it could be anything. It could be the aero power-up, the draft, the breakaway burrito, the lightweight, or even the invisibility power-up. As we see an attack. Look at Pozzo Vivo on the left-hand side. The same style when he attacks on the road rocking and rolling all over the place. It's lovely to see him back racing. He had that terrible crash and many thought that his career was over. Well, he's trying to break away. He's putting out seven and a half watts per kilo. Michael Woods is riding at eight to come back to him. And Lewis Menkes is just a little bit behind not getting any sense of the heart rate of Mike Woods as he goes to the front, but uh, Pozzo Vivo's on 187. Only four kilometres to go. It looks to me like the yellow jersey of Menkes is having to fight to come back. There's the positions on the road. Roman Varde producing a good performance in eighth place. Ben O'Connor, sixth place. O'Connor, certainly, when he was in the top ten in the Giro d'Italia, he's a rider who can ride a Grand Tour, then had a terrible crash, but O'Connor is a rider for the future. There's no doubt whatsoever about that. Here is Menke starting to lose the wheel now. He's eight seconds behind the duo in the front. So the chances of a South African winning on Mandela Day are disappearing. But the chances of a rider from an African team winning are still intact. But Woods is starting to turn the screw now on Putsavivo. Putsavivo just used a lightweight power-up, makes him lighter by nine and a half kilos for 15 seconds. Putsavivo is one of the lightest riders in the peloton anyway. So that's going to give him substantial help. The top 10 then does contain uh, Bardet. Rigoberto Aran is in 12th place on the climb. Bacalans is in 14th place. But right now, NTT are securing their place in the yellow jersey. All of their riders, perfect position.
Woods and Pots of Evo. Four hundred and forty two watts as Michael Woods now tries to attack. And he's steadily going clear. Big attack by Michael Woods. This could be the moment that this stage is won. 3,300 metres to go. And Michael Woods has accelerated and accelerated hard. Lots of Evo. Messing around with his uh, phone, I think, or something. Just trying to get himself comfortable on the bike. Michael Woods now puts in a massive attack. 400 and odd watts, 7.2 watts per kilo as he jumps away from Pots of Evo. There's the gap between the two riders. Pots of Evo doesn't really have any answer to that attack of Michael Woods. This area of the Mont Ventoux climb has had the inspiration of the, the mountain streams of France. A little bit of creative license being used on this virtual Mont Ventoux. Pots of Evo has now dropped back. Michael Woods, the 33-year-old Canadian, going clear. Can Pots of Evo just hold on here for second place? Well, he's been there all the time. He's not had too many troubles, but you can tell now he's getting towards the red zone with 185 beats per minute. Thanks for all your messages this afternoon. Very much appreciated. Don't forget to vote for your most aggressive rider of the stage by going on Twitter and going to at Le Tour, the Tour de France Twitter feed. And that's where you can vote for your most aggressive rider of this fifth stage of the virtual Tour de France. Under the arch with two kilometers to go. And Pots of Evo is just a little bit down the road now. Ten seconds. Michael Woods has really put the pressure on. Born in Toronto. Came to the World Tour in 2016, Michael Woods. When he moved to the Cannondale team. In a strange way for Michael Woods, this uh, lockdown period has probably been good. He had that terrible accident and uh, has had to rehabilitate that leg. So he's coming back strongly. And he looks all right now, doesn't he? Looks really ready for racing. When we start back out on the road, it's going to be such a condensed period of time, around 100 days to fit in so many races. The real Tour de France scheduled for the 29th of August. 1,900 metres to go for Michael Woods. There's all our riders across the world. in all their different places that they are they're riding. You can see various different levels of pain and suffering right now. There is Nico Roach. Well, yesterday, Nico set a really strong performance on the climb. He set the record for this Mont Ventoux climb, but today he's not necessarily been great for him. He's 19th on the climb. He does like riding Zwift. There's Adam Yates who today doesn't look like he's enjoying riding Zwift at all. Uh, 
Adam Yates has probably been putting in a huge amount of work ready for this season, but the legs are hurting. He's keeping an eye on uh, the screen. There's Julian Alaphilippe. I think Julian has gone into the gruppetto now and he's just pedaling his way to the top of the mountain. With his de Kooning quick step teammates. Getting himself ready for the next few weeks, which there are so many objectives for this rider. It's interesting when you talk about Julian Alaphilippe, you never really know the objectives, whether it's one day races, stage, the odd stage, or whether really in the back of his mind he thinks, I can actually win the Tour de France. Michael Woods, not far now from the finish, 1,200 metres of effort to go for the Canadian. He's got rid of Domenico Pozzavivo on the climb. 15 seconds now the advantage, 41 to Lewis Menkes. Stefan de Bod in fourth place for NTT. Ben O'Connor's down in seventh, but NTT have secured huge amount of points. Remember, today is a points contest. 50 points for the winner of the stage. Nearly at the top of the Mont Ventoux at Chalet Reynard. 1,000 metres to go. Michael Woods gets the most combative rider of the day. Very well deserved for him. And it looks like he could also take today's stage if he continues like this. Pozzovivo 16 seconds behind. But if Pozzovivo has a power up, he might be able to close the gap a little bit. I'm not certain that he could get to the, the wheel of Michael Woods. Woods now starts to put the pressure on. It's flattening out a little on the run into the finish. The gradient doesn't bite quite so much. A good day for EF Education first on this virtual Tour de France. But to Vivo at 16 seconds. Well, the last winner of the real Tour de France here at Chalet Reynard was Thomas de Ghent. Other riders who've won on the Mont Ventoux. In real life, Chris Froome. Jean-Francois Bernard, Eddie Merckx, Poulidor, Gau uh, Charlie Gaul. Pozzovivo nearly at the top now. 15 seconds behind Michael Woods. A little bit more pressure on the pedals. Pozzovivo just has a few hundred metres to go. But Michael Woods is heading towards the line now. He can see the gantry across the road. The Queen stage of the virtual Tour de France has been dominated by Menkes, Pozzovivo and Woods, but it's Woods who's going to go clear now. He's 250 metres from the finish. One last big effort for this Canadian rider and he will win the fifth stage of the virtual Tour de France. Michael Woods sprinting flat out on his smart trainer at home, but Woods is gonna win a stage and it's an important win. The lockdown period has got everyone turned their attention to indoor training and he's proved that he can win on the biggest mountain. The Mont Ventoux stage, Chalet Reynard, the winner, the Canadian, Michael Woods of EF Education first. He takes the victory in a time of 46 minutes. Great performance by Michael Woods. Domenico Pozzavivo comes up to the line now on Mandela Day for the African team of NTT. Second place for Pozzavivo. Well, they're all giving him some congratulations. Pozzavivo, 19 seconds down at the line. Lewis Menkes is gonna be third. The South African on the podium on Mandela Day. As he makes his way to the finish, Lewis Menkes, third place for NTT today.
Doug Ryder in the background, the owner of NTT team. Started this team as a small South African team and has brought it to the World Tour. The white jersey then, Stefan de Bod, look at the face on him as he reaches the top of the climb. He's going to be in fourth place. First place, EF Education first, second, third and fourth to NTT. Very, very well done to Team NTT in this virtual Tour de France. Tomorrow we'll finish on the Champs-Élysées. The first time we've ever raced a virtual Champs-Élysées. So that's going to be an interesting day. And they've got the chance of winning that stage as well with Ryan Gibbons. Michael Woods reaches the top of the climb. Pots of Evo in second. Lewis Menkes in third. Coming up to the line now, a great performance for Rally with Gavin Mannion. He takes fifth place on the day. And Eddie Dunbar of Ineos is going to take sixth place for them. That's a good day for him. Giving Team Ineos uh, a sixth place. Ethan Hayter took fourth place on stage number three. Dunbar crosses the line. Still some riders making their way to the top of this virtual mountain. Next to come should be Ben O'Connor. And then just behind him will be Roman Bardet. Rigoberto Aran still in the top 11. Jan Bacalans is in 13th as we see the next riders. This is Rodriguez just being left by Bardet. So Roman Bardet will finish in the top 10 for Azure de Zerle Mondial. There he is. Working hard all the way to the top. It's been a good workout for these riders this afternoon. 46 minutes of racing for the winner. Bardet is going to finish three minutes down. As he just reaches the line now. Around about 50 minutes for Roman Bardet. Well, certainly looks like he's put in a big effort. Here comes Janssens or Valpersen Fenix. Team that started this virtual Tour de France in really high spirits with Mathieu van der Poel taking fourth place on stage number one. They were also chasing the King of the Mountains for a long time. And he's going to come in around about four minutes, 4.40 down on the day. That air conditioning unit perfectly positioned. Rigoberto Aran now. 11th place for the Colombian. With the top class pain cave. Rigoberto Aran is almost there. Keeping the momentum going, he can see the gantry now on this swift platform just in front of him. And Rigoberto Aran will complete the day in 11th place. So first place for EF, EF Education first, 11th place for them as well. And Rigo give us a big salute. <laughs> That looked like he's finished. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> it 
This is Virgil Swanya in the background. <laughs> Next coming up to the line is Will Barter of CCC. Will Barter in 14th place. Just behind was Sylvain Monique and Jan Bacalans just after Rigoberto ran. And Will Barter in 14th place. Leo Vincent of Groupama FDJ. Going to finish 16th on today's stage. Juan Lopez Perez in 17th. Remember, the top 25 riders will count. Warren Bargill is still on the climb, so is Nico Roach. Nico looks like he's suffered badly this afternoon. There he is on the right. Maybe yesterday went just a little bit too deep because yesterday he flew up this mountain in the reconnaissance ride. Dan Martin, his cousin, heading towards the top of the climb. Dan in the virtual King of the Mountains jersey. For Israel Startup Nation. Well, many people were surprised when he decided to move to that team, but look where it is now. Warren Bargill still climbing. I'm not so sure he's going to get in the top 25. Here's the classification then of stage five of the virtual Tour de France. Michael Woods of EF Education first wins in 46 minutes and three seconds ahead of an NTT trio. Pozzovivo, Menkes and Debod. There's the makeup of the top ten riders for you this afternoon. Well, shortly, I'm sure we're going to hear from Michael Woods on his stage win today. The virtual DD in the background. Chalet Reynard. A nice spot to finish today's stage in terms of a virtual world. Well, today's winner then comes from Canada. He's a true athlete. He certainly is. He's a rider who everyone has started to really note as far as his performances on the road are concerned. We enjoyed watching him win that stage. So we're going to hear in a few moments from Michael Woods, the winner of stage five of the virtual Tour de France. Michael Woods, congratulations, winner of stage five of the virtual Tour de France on the virtual Mont Ventoux to Chalet Reynard. How important was it for you as a team to get a victory in this virtual Tour de France? Uh, certainly very important. Uh, this is a big event for us. Uh, it's, it's a great platform and uh, yeah, we wanted to get a win. Finally, we got one. Well, we were watching you on your uh, on your camera the entire time on that climb. Pozzovivo gave you a good run for your money, didn't he? Did you think at any time that you couldn't get away from him? Oh, yeah, certainly, especially Louis Menchies as well. Both Pozzovivo and Louis, uh, and Louis Menchies are, are super strong riders. And uh, normally in a race, you can look them in the eye and see where they're, how they're doing, how they're feeling. Instead, I could just see the watts per heel on the side, and I just kept on trying to trying to see when they, would, when they would crack, hoping they'd crack a lot earlier than they did. But, uh, yeah, fortunately, I was able to keep it going. 
Yeah, well, you finally managed to crack them, which was which was great. You've obviously rehabilitated during the lockdown period, and now we're getting towards racing. Physically, in terms of an effort, how tough is this? Just to give the fans a sense of what sort of exertion you're putting out, albeit on a very short stage. Yeah, I think um, Swift Racing is certainly a lot more, a lot, lot more uh, sustained effort, a lot more of a sustained effort. I think that's one of the reasons why I have success at it, just because it is uh, quite similar to running. And I know Freddie Ovette mentioned this uh, a few uh, days ago, got in a bit of a fight tip with JV over this, but my, my team boss, but uh, I actually agree with my, my team boss in this, that it is a lot more similar to, to running and uh, it's just a harder, higher sustained effort for a long period of time. And uh, I can stand basically the entire time in, uh, on, his, on the Zwift profile on the, on the trainer, unlike uh, in real life where I have to sit and aerodynamics impacts you for standing up. So if you probably saw me on the video, I was standing the entire time and able to keep the, the watts down, the power up, and just stand my way, run, run my way on the bike, basically. Well, we enjoyed watching you. Final question then, Michael. Um, we're getting now to the start of what we hope will be a great season, albeit late and so many troubles we've had across the world. What what are we expecting from you? What what programme are we going to see from you and what are your hopes for this restart of the season? Um, well, I'm starting the season off in Strade Bianca. Uh, it'll be my first uh, time doing that race. Uh, just preparation for uh, what is the first big X mark on the calendar for me, Lombardia. Uh, I love that race. Really important monument to me. Uh, hopefully I can do well. Well, Michael, congratulations on your Stage 5 victory on the Virtual Tour de France. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you on the road very soon. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Michael Woods then, the winner of this stage, giving us that little bit of insight as to what the effort is like to win a stage of this virtual Tour de France. And we look forward to seeing him racing at Strade Bianche and Lombardia and the other races that uh, he is seeing as his objective. Let's take a look then at the classifications after stage five. NTT Pro Cycling firmly now at the top of the leaderboard for the yellow jersey. 391 points as we go into the final day. Rally in second and EF Education first in third place. Well, NTT put up such a strong showing today that they're going to be very, very hard to beat now. Take a look then at the green jersey. NTT at the top of the leaderboard again, 222 points. 100 points to Mitchelton Scott. That is a very big lead now in the green jersey contest. And CCC now in third. 81 points to them. in the mountains and Israel were wearing this jersey but NTT now secure that with 62 points 32 points ahead of VF Pro Cycling in second place and Israel starts up nation in third now so Israel have really defended that all the way through but they lose it on the penultimate day Tomorrow then we'll be on the Champs-Élysées. The virtual tour, the virtual Tour de France will end. And I must admit, I've seen the virtual Champs-Élysées and it's uh, a great representation. Let's take a look then at the highlights of today's stage. Through virtual France on the run-in to the Mont Ventoux. It was a day for the South African team. Mandela Day. 
but Michael Woods turned that around. He takes the stage victory for Canada and EF, whilst the African team continue in the yellow jersey. Thanks very much for joining us for the penultimate day of the virtual Tour de France. We'll be back tomorrow in Paris. Bye for now.